And welcome to Houston Newsmakers Extra. I've been talking with her, Lindsay Levingston Christian, who is former reporter here at KPRC. And the reason I'm talking to her is because she has started a social media platform called Sir Thriver. This is after her diagnosis with breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer. And I think I, I know and you know and those of us who've been active in the breast cancer fight community know that triple negative is a kind of breast cancer that strikes uh, black women uh, more frequently than it does others. And so uh, what is the challenge when you got that diagnosis? Because sometimes the research as it relates to triple negative isn't as broad as other breast cancers. Well, Kim Burrell, first of all, thank you for having me on Newsmakers. Uh, what I learned about triple negative breast cancer during my journey is that it is the, as you mentioned, it's a very aggressive form of, of the subtype of breast cancer. I was diagnosed with stage 2B. So thank God for the early detection uh, that resulted in a positive prognosis because uh, my medical team was able to treat and eradicate the cancerous mass in my right breast. So early detection is was what resulted in the positive prognosis on my end. But we as black women are more prone to and susceptible to a triple negative breast cancer diagnosis at just a higher rate, unfortunately. And the early diagnosis came about because of what? Was it a regular checkup for you or did you notice a lump? How did that come about? Cambrell, I felt a lump in my right breast. So, and I, and I'm preaching this to the choir, to the ladies, if you feel something, say something. I felt something, so I scheduled an appointment with my gynecologist. And uh, through her testing and through a series of what was my first mammogram, a 3D mammogram, a breast ultrasound, and a biopsy, it was determined that that mass that I felt was indeed cancerous. And it should be said that the reason you were doing that mammogram for the first time is that typically doctors suggest that you weren't old enough to start getting mammograms, correct? Exactly. I'm under the age of 40, and it is recommended that women wait until the age of 40 to get their first mammogram. And so I also am, am, am preaching to the choir this message that if you have a family history of breast cancer, which I didn't know until midway during my journey, that the BRCA1 gene mutation runs rampant on the paternal side of my family that I could have done something sooner. But if you have a family history that's aggressive, then you should be getting your mammograms before the age of 40. What was the toughest part of this for you? Now, I'm going to ask you about Sir Thriver because that's the, the social media platform you have now. But before you could ever get to that, you had to go through the fight. And I'm going to ask you, what was the toughest part for you? Cambrell, the toughest part for me of my breast cancer journey was uh, simply going through it. It was overwhelming in a sense that it happened so fast, mm -hmm. meaning as soon as I landed here in Houston, uh, the, the series of tests and appointments just started and that train took off and it, would, it went full speed. So it was an emotional journey having to process each part, each appointment, each surgery, each chemotherapy treatment. So overall, the entire process, especially the medicinal part, that was the toughest. Mm. But I powered through. I, I mean, I was taking Zumba classes and kickboxing. I, my goal was to stay strong and fight it, not let breast cancer take over, but allow me, and I took over breast cancer. I was not letting it get over and take over my life. This whole uh, process, now that you have come through on the other side, you're feeling good, you're feeling excited about the next level, Sir Thriver came uh, to mind and you started that. And talk about that process, how that came together and how you started to do that. So at the, I would say right after my uh, breast reconstruction surgery, which also happened during COVID, I was really trying to think of a way to make a purposeful pivot given my media background and now introducing this health story journey and testimony. And so I thought of this idea to create this platform to inform, inspire, and empower women and really share the wealth of information that I learned along my journey and ultimately uh, provide a support system and hope and help to women. 
but that's what I wish I'd had more of in terms of resources and continued conversation around it, especially for young women of color. So, so there was a, it was a purposeful pivot moment, aha moment that this was my God given assignment now, and I'm doing it full throttle. I'm going at it. So from the phone call of your diagnosis to now, wh how many months, how, how short a period has that been? So last July, July, August, September, October, so we're looking at 15 months. And wow, if I look back at it now, I look back at July, I could not have seen this moment right here. It was just, it happened so quickly. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that's one thing that I could say about the journey is that while it is temporary, while it was hard pressing through, uh, there is light there's light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, there's amazing opportunities to, to share, to help other women pull through. Well, I'm glad that you're uh, here and doing this. Um, you know how much I love you and I'm glad that you have fought through this. I remember when you first came back to Houston and you shared with me the journey that you were about to go on. And so I'm happy to be here as we celebrate your continued journey. And Sir Thriver is gonna be another success for you. Tell everybody where they can find your platform. You can log on to Sir Thriver, S U R T H R I V R dot com. Got and Sir Thriver is also very active across all social media platforms. And thank you, Cambrell, too, for just being so supportive during my journey. I know when I gave you that, when I called you, uh, you immediately just kind of went into dad mode and offered your love, your prayers, and support. So I just want to say thank you for that. You are so welcome. Uh, it has been my pleasure and honor. And, uh, as I've said oftentimes, love me some Lindsay Levingston. <laughs> <laughs> love me some Cam Brown, my TV dad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. And uh, for those of you watching on this Houston Newsmakers Extra, share this with everyone you know.